G'day Peter here, I just want to talk to you about uh, hearing from God We talked today about the still small voice of the Holy Ghost This is the main way that God uses to talk to us His spirit is within our spirit and when he speaks as the still small voice We can hear him if we trained ourselves to listen But we got to, you know we got to know that he's in there, know that he can speak, know that he wants to speak to us, and know that he will speak to us. You know, before I was saved, I was in the, like, the new age. I joined a mob called the Rosicrucians, which I told you about in the intro, and you invite in spirits, and they train you to hear, the, hear from uh, these spirits. They train you, you know, they don't tell you they're in there, but they teach you that they're your subconscious for a start, but after a while you learn that they're, they're separate identities, they've got their own personalities, and and they speak, and the, the, the way they speak, they're hidden in amongst your thoughts because, well, that's where they're hiding, and, you know, until you realise that, that they're there, they only sound like they're your own thoughts, and God's... God's the same way, the still small voice is the same way, he uses it to, to direct, to lead, to guide, to counsel, to, to warn, in, in all ways you can think of, God will use his still small voice um, to um, speak to us, but we've got to know that he's there, know that he can speak, don't go to anywhere where they say God doesn't speak, but only to the elders or the pastors or the leaders, he speaks to everyone. If you're born again believer, you've got his spirit in you, he'll speak to you, he's speaking to you all the time, but we got to like calm our thoughts, steal our thoughts, get our thoughts off ourselves to listen to him. So it talks in the Bible in 1 Kings 19.11, when uh, Elijah was running away from Jezebel, he went into a cave and he heard and he said, this is God talking, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord and behold the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice this is the still small voice of God this is how he speaks, we're all looking for him to come thundering from the heavens and, and give us direction, give us, um, you know, give us what we want, give us excitement, you know, in a big way. But, but he speaks as a still small voice, a still, like a quiet voice from our spirit and a still voice. He doesn't have to, you know, magnify any, you know, or accentuate any, um, anything because he's God he spoke and the heavens were uh, made he spoke let there be light and there was light you know what he speaks he doesn't have to magnify anything and make a big show of it he when he speaks he speaks and uh and you know that's how he does it and we're meant to be listening and, and no big thing no like Jesus or God or angels coming that can happen but we got to train ourselves to listen to the still small voice and just because we're hearing it doesn't mean we've made it God will, God can rebuke and chasten and uh, you know direct lead warn everything in the still small voice but you know we've got to learn to um to to recognize the way he speaks because the devil speaks in the still small voice too so you know, once you understand that God's doing that, the devil will know, and then there's a battle. There's always a battle. The battle never finishes. The battle, as we get to more levels, the battle follows us, or the, and the battle's always in front of us and around us, but God can keep us separate. God can train us if we're humble, you know, if we're not, if we are not proud and are not full of the world and he can train us and lead us we'll get to that later on in Zechariah 4 6 it says then he answered and spoke unto me saying 
This is the word of the Lord under Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. There it is, the spirit of God's within us. He moves and he reacts within us and gets us to, to do his will from within, not not written directions, not instructions. He doesn't pick us up and say, Right, there's your job, do that. It's all like it's all like so we've always got to seek him, we've always got to look for him. And uh and we heard this in the the last one I'd done about the the word and he'll bring us bring to us his word for use in daily situations. This is John's uh, in the book of John 14:26, Jesus speaking, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all, all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. This is the Holy Ghost again. He doesn't just have to speak in words. He can, he can just bring thoughts of the past or thoughts of scripture or thoughts of, of uh, whatever you've learned from him in the past. He'll bring it to the current situation for you to use, for you to recognize what's going on or, or to teach to, to teach us or give understanding and knowledge and wisdom and uh he's john sixteen thirteen. how be it when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come that the same as be as the scripture before John fourteen twenty six, he'll show us things that come. He'll show us, you know, what we're walking into or what we need to do. He'll direct us and bring counsel. And, and John sixteen fourteen, this is the next scripture. Uh, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Like, like again, whether it's in words, whether it's in pictures, whether it's you know, what, however it is, but it comes from within and we've got to train, we've got to take our thoughts captive to, to watch what's going on up there because that's where it's all happening. I mean, once you start hearing from God, you're, uh, you know, there's going to be a battle on and no one's going to get it perfect. No one's got it perfect. If you're following a man that says he's got everything right and perfect, then it run out the door, you know, as quick as you can. Don't look back. He gives us the words we need when we need them. In Mark 13, 11, it says, But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. God, when we're in situations where we need to speak, you know, life or when, when we're witnessing to someone or when we just need to speak words of encouragement or whatever, God will, you know, give us a download through his spirit and bring them even out of our mouth. He'll give us the words and um, the Holy Spirit will be speaking through our words like it says in John 7.38, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water and while he's you know, bringing the words to us, our mouth will be moving, speaking the words, you know, sometimes when you preach, if he's given you the gift to preach, whatever gift he's given you, you'll, your mouth will be moving and you'll know the words aren't coming from you, they're coming from within and from above and, uh, you know, and when it's all over, you'll be struggling to remember what you've even said, but God will speak through you. You know, and he, he gives us the words. The Holy Ghost will even speak out of us. He speaks without words, with conviction, a sin to guide us. John sixteen seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So he's departed. He's, went, he's been uh, glorified in heaven. You know, and he sent us the Holy Spirit for us to, as him, he's, it's him in us. 16.8, and when he is come, he'll reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is another way he, he speaks. You know, he speaks, he convicts us of our sin. He, he's, the Holy Spirit's within us to convict, convict us of the things we're doing wrong. When I was saved, you know, I 
I was or before I was saved, I was running around in sin. I didn't get much conviction, but when I when I got saved, it was like done the littlest thing wrong, and oh, I knew I was doing the wrong thing. So he's there to convict us. We got to discern the difference between conviction and condemnation, because the devil will condemn where God will convict it's a totally different thing and and we've got to be on you know we've got to be wary because the, like I said the battle is always happening as long as we walk in 1 John 1 9 if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we got to as soon as we're convicted we got to know you know what we've done and and confess it straight away and you know cover it in the blood so it and take away the foothold of the devil to uh to bring condemnation which he can you know if we're we having you know believe that god has washed us clean he'll start to condemn so always confess your sins you know and we got to know the difference between what's righteous and unrighteousness and uh isaiah 64 6 says but we are as all we are all all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away our righteousness is worth nothing we got to walk in the righteousness of god we got to know the difference between what he wants us to do and what we think we should be doing because what we think we should be doing if it's not in his will it's a waste of time you know and then and judgment we got, you know, God's judge the devil. There's judgment. If we do the wrong thing, we're going to be judged. You know, we're going to be chastised. God will chastise us. He'll speak to us, you know, and he'll show us and lead us before that happens to turn us away from what he's going to do to us. But he will chastise if we don't listen and don't heed the warning, uh, which... um it says in Hebrews 3.15, while it is said today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. So we've got to listen. We've got to always realise that, you know, we can walk our own path and not good. We've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. We've got to be led and stay on his path. Hebrews 12.6, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. When you get chastised by God and you know it's from God, thank him because he's kept you on that narrow path. When we start to wander, he wants us back on that path. So thank him. He's chastised me like lots and uh, and I deserved it and I thank him. I glorify him because I wouldn't know, you know, where where I'd be if he hasn't, him, he himself hasn't put me back on the path. In 1 John 2.15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. This is one reason that he will chastise us. But he'll speak to us. He'll even send others to speak to us. And... uh we, we got to want to listen, you know. So if your your main aim of life is just give me, give me, give me, want, 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 me, 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 then you're on the wrong track, you know. We we need to um, what we need to do is Second Corinthians ten four and five for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. These are the weapons I've spoke about uh, before. In up the other videos that we need to do, you know, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. There it is, the me, 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 give me, give me, give me, what, 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 I can be this, I can be that, you know, I can do this and blah, 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 you know, and, uh, you know, thoughts of covetous, pride, greed, lust, whatever. We got to cast them down. We got to recognise them. We got to recognise them, cast them down, and then it says, "And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ." This is so so crucial, so, so you know, 
it's so important that you do this because this is where God's speaking. If there's other things you've let in there, other noise that you let in there, other voices, then you, you'll never hear God. He's got to, you know, you got to still yourself, still your mind, calm yourself, you know, and uh, get rid of the junk out of your heads. I mean, I, my head was full of it. But, and, and still gets in. I still let it in. And the devil's pumping her in too. So we always got to be on our toes. We always got to be on the ball and looking, you know, looking and on the job all the time. Because if we don't, you know, we need to do the above or it says in Second Timothy 4, 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned aside to fables, turned under fables. The devil's pumping stuff in, he's speaking to us. we got to really start to know whose voice is who, and the times that are coming, we need to know that now. You know, we got to trust God he does want the best for us and he does want to lead us you know it's eternal life our eternal life started now and uh, we, we should walk in or forget what's behind move forwards you know and don't let don't let the devil, don't let people bring you like tasty lolly stuff, fairy floss that you want to feed on and that sounds good and uh, you know that that you know, puts me in a place where I think I should be, not, you know, I don't want to be a servant, I want to be on top of the heap, you know, get rid of them thoughts, because the, the churches are full of them, the world's full of them, everywhere you look, that's all they are, and in Acts twenty eight twenty seven, it says, for the heart of these people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. If we continue walking in the junk, not listening to God, listening to man, running after the things of the world, then, you know, what's the, uh, we're never going to get anywhere. We're going to, we might even lose our salvation, you know, and, that's for eternity, that's forever, in the pit, in hell, in torment. So we've got to really learn to listen to the still small voice of God. That's the main way he speaks. You know, I just I just want to say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you and I pray. Everyone that's listened to this video right now, everyone that watched it, I pray that you speak to them. Open their ears to hear. Open their eyes to see. Let them hear your still small voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind up every spirit of doubt, every spirit of unbelief, every spirit of pride and self-righteousness that's blocking your, your voice, God, in Jesus' name. And I lose hearing. I lose abundant hearing. I ask you to open their ears and bring life, bring light, bring truth, bring joy and peace, speak encouragement to them, Father, counsel them, God, comfort them through your still small voice, direct them and lead them, God, down that narrow path that you've set out, and I bless them, God, bless them by letting them hear your voice, Father, speak to them even right now in the name of Jesus, amen.